Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. This one uh, being made on Wednesday, May 16th, to be aired on Thursday, May the 17th. And we're going to continue a story that we started uh, for yesterday. It has to do with a drill that is taking place in the Middle East that involves 19 countries. Uh, this is a military drill called the largest military exercise in the Middle East for the last 10 years. It involves 19 countries, including Bahrain, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, uh, Lebanon, Pakistan, Qatar, Britain, France, Italy, Spain, and Australia, but it specifically excludes Israel. Uh, over 12,000 soldiers taking part in this uh, military exercise called Eager Lion 2012. Meanwhile, uh, from Debka file, we have a sort of a counter story. Iran drills the first large-scale paratroop drops for offensive action. Uh, for the last two or three days, special operations units of the Iranian army and revolutionary guards uh, began a practice of offensive tactics for the first time, dropping in <clears throat> large-scale forces from the air deep behind uh, enemy lines. The many war games Iran has conducted until now focused on defenses of strategic and nuclear uh, locations, repelling invaders who might have uh, uh, an invasion and destruction of uh, Iran's nuclear uh, production facilities in mind. And so uh, their previous war games have been limited to that. This one, on the other hand, uh, is expanding uh, their defense posture quite uh, uh, in quite an amazing fashion. This drill displayed uh, the aggressive capabilities of the Iranian forces. Uh, the games were called Jafar Tayyar, staged in a remote region near the Afghan border. Uh, they did this to more or less keep secret what they were doing with their uh, commando tactics. In announcing the exercise, uh, the deputy commander of operations for the Iranian ground forces called it just another exercise for, quote, maintaining the preparedness and promoting the combat capability of units stationed in the region. However, the timing on this and the, uh, the aggressive and, and large-scale display uh, was, most ex experts have thought, was calculated to deflect the weight of Operation Eager Lion 2012. So we have two sets of war games going on simultaneously, one in Iran and one in the Middle East, headquartered in Jordan. Western intelligence sources observing the exercise report that its offensive nature was evident. Air transports coming in from the rest of the country dropped large numbers of paratroopers and special forces. Air Force fighter bombers practiced intense uh, bombardments of small targeted locations. Helicopters drilled rapid transfers of forces between points and air cover for the units reaching the ground. Last Monday, Persian Gulf rulers invited to Riyadh by the Saudi King Abdullah for the summit on the Iranian threat uh, dwelt long and hard on the exercise and concluded the threat had been exacerbated and that Tehran had more in store for them than the closing uh, the, and closing the Strait of Hormuz to oil traffic in the event of war. In other words, the Saudis had tried to talk peace with the Iranians, but the Iranians showed them that uh, not only would they try to close the Straits of Hormuz to oil shipping, uh, but they were also prepared for further and more aggressive military actions. They saw special forces being pre prepared by Iran to strike deep inside of their own countries, up to and including the oil-producing regions of Saudi Arabia, by the way. So you see now that we have war games extending in every direction. Uh, we have the United Nations coming into Syria. We have the uh, Muslim Brotherhood in Syria uh, trying to overthrow the government of Bashar Assad. We have Hezbollah uh, now uh, being aided by Al-Qaeda. We have 
this Operation Eager Lion being operated, uh, the military exercise with 12,000 soldiers being operated out of Amman, Jordan. And finally, we have new military exercises in Iran, called, codenamed Jafar Tayyar. The exercise also served as an ongoing trade of war signals between Washington and Tehran. This is sort of a, uh, if you will, uh, diplomatic interchange. Sp sp uh, staging a special forces exercise not far from the U.S. military presence in Afghanistan was meant as a rejoinder to U.S.-led special forces that are uh, taking uh, their operations afield in Jordan across the border with Syria and the participation of 19 different nations. That's amazing to me. Iranian and Syrian media have made much of the fact that the U.S.-led war game was named Eager Lion 12 as a deliberate insult to Bashar al-Assad, whose name is Arabic for lion. And there you go. The games continue. Each day seems to bring a new level of tension to the Middle East. Uh, it was, uh, if you recall, uh, two or three weeks ago, it was the United States uh, exercising its military muscle in the Persian Gulf. It was war games being planned in conjunction with the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait. And then it was war games in Jordan, excluding Israel. And now it's war games in Iran, in which they are staging invasion forces that could possibly strike into the heart of the oil-producing regions of Saudi Arabia. Meanwhile, in the background, there lurks Russia, very quietly overseeing and supplying weapons to all sides, and, and quietly w awaiting their opportunity to take advantage of what they now perceive as a sure thing, that is, the advent of war in the Middle East. It seems to be almost an assumption these days that there will be a war and that it'll be very, very soon. So, pray for the Israelis. They're the ones left out of the exercises. They're the ones more and more being left to their own devices, to their own self-defense. Just as the Bible suggested that in the latter days Israel would be cut off but according to the prophet Zechariah, the Israeli forces would rise up and show themselves to be stronger than all of their enemies. So we're watching. You be watching too, and we'll keep reporting on these events as they occur. So keep looking up, everybody.